This is Twit. Tim is in Cape Cod, a great place to be. Especially when uh, 26 inches of our snow has melted in just the past week alone. Oh, I know. I hear you. My, my mom's in Cranston, and I hear that you're having a little thaw. That's nice. Yeah. About so time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a question, uh, Leo, or an opinion or whatever on uh, GSM phones and radio band compatibility. And part of my uh, questions have to do with, uh, well, let's just take, for instance, the, uh, the, the Galaxy S4. And I noticed the different model numbers that are out there that all claim to be GSM compatible have uh, different radio bands that they support. And I was wondering, do you know of any type of um, uh, resource out there or matrix that shows which carrier uses which band so that, you know, in, in the used phone selection world, I can pick the one that is most compatible? Or, yeah. Or have you? Okay. Yeah, there's a great, it's called Phone Arena. I think that's it. There's a, there's a place where they have... GSM, oh, I'm sorry, GSM Arena, I apologize, not Phone Arena, GSM Arena, and they have specs for every uh, phone. You search for the phone, I think this is it, uh, in their tools section, and it will give you the specs for every phone, and the spec you want is the radio frequency, and, you, mm -hmm. and, and this is something people don't really think about. Getting a compatible smartphone. In the U.S., you buy from a U.S. carrier. It's going to work in the U.S. But as you travel around the world, there are different technologies. There's GSM. There's CDMA, which is not widely used worldwide. There's the future, LTE. Everybody will be LTE in the future. But even getting an LTE phone, you have to get LTE on the right radio frequencies, the right bands. And different countries mm -hmm. and different carriers support different bands. So you need to figure this all out, which is the... There's another one here. PC guy 88 in the chat room suggests, "Will my phone work?" dot net. I like that. <laughs> that might that might simplify. You put the phone in, and then it says, "Here's uh, you know you select your your brand, and then it says here's uh, and then you select what country, and then you and then it, it'll tell you." Yep, but but yep. you're right, especially companies like Samsung that are truly global companies will release different phones for many different markets. You can buy a Galaxy Note 4 for uh, South America, Latin America, Asia, uh, Europe, and the Middle East, North America. I think those are. I think I've covered. There probably is an Oceania one as well, and those yeah. all have different frequencies and capabilities. In the case of Samsung, they even have different chipsets. Yeah. Okay. Great. I um, funny story. I, uh, I bought a phone from one of the uh, the refurbished recyclers out there, whose name I won't mention. But uh, I got, popped the phone out of the box, nice and clean, shrink wrapped, fired it up, and all my uh, embedded uh, apps were in Russian. So. <laughs> oh, it's happened to me many times because I buy, uh, I buy, I like to get unlocked phones. I don't want to get carrier subsidized phones. I don't want the carrier stuff on there. And for review mm -hmm. purposes, I want a plain phone. So I'll go to companies like Expansus, which sell f international phones and. My uh, my uh, Microsoft Lumia 1520 was all in Spanish because it was a Latin American edition. I've had the Russian edition of phones. I've had the, my uh, my current Galaxy Note 4 was the Chinese edition. Everything was in Chinese, <laughs> and it's tough when it's yeah. not it, it's not a Western alphabet to figure out now what, <laughs> what where do I go? Yeah, I will uh, I will check uh, take a look in the chat room for that uh, website. And I, I certainly appreciate it. One parting comment though, um, you, you had a discussion yesterday. Uh, I don't know if it was on air or in the, the chat room about the uh, the Linksys WRT54s. Yes. And um, I tell you, I've had mine in place. I cannot kill it. I have tried to kill it, and it just keeps chugging. I put one out of my tool shed as a repeater so I can uh, run around the yard on my riding lawnmower to listen to uh, <laughs> your program on my uh, noise-canceling headphones. <laughs> That's awesome. It's been, out there, it's been out there in extreme temperature, you know, minus 10 to, you know, nearly 100 degrees, and the thing just doesn't quit. We have, how many uh, How many W54, uh, how many have, uh, do we have in the uh, basement, WRT54s? We have quite a few, don't we? We have dozens. Because what happens is you can you can modify the firmware on these. These were a classic router. And I think Lynx is still sells them for 25 bucks. Yeah, and, I've, and, I've bought all mine of yard sales <laughs> for a buck apiece. They're great. They're classics. And if they break, no big deal. You got 10 more in the basement. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.